What is up Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show back here again to do another video. In this video, I'll be recapping the Broncos 2015 NFL Draft class. Of course, the 2015 NFL Draft was last week, so this video is a little late. I do apologize for that, but I did want to give my take on what uh, John Elway and Gary Kubiak did in their first draft together. I thought this was a pretty solid draft for the Broncos. I think we got some very solid players, filled some position of need, uh, and I, I just wanted to, to, to make a video, get my take on some of the guys that we picked. And, and how they're going to fare next year on this Broncos team and how they're going to impact our team uh, next season. Well, starting with the uh, first round uh, pick for the Broncos, the first pick we made of the draft, of course, was at pick number 23. We took Shane Ray, uh, linebacker out of Missouri. Uh, this was a surprise to, I think, a lot of people, a lot of Broncos fans. I, I certainly didn't expect us to get Shane Ray. We actually traded up from the 28th pick uh, to draft him uh, with the Detroit Lions. Swapped first round picks with them. We also sent two fifth round picks to them and Manny Ramirez, uh, which you know I think is, is really not giving up much to trade up five spots for a guy that a lot of people regarded uh, a few months ago as a top you know seven or eight selection. Um, and, and a lot of people have said this, you know, some people have b believed this guy was the second best pass rusher in the draft behind Dante Fowler Jr. So to get Shane Ray at 23, I think this was a great value pick by the Broncos, even though we don't necessarily need another linebacker and another edge rusher. Uh, this guy, I think, was, was was too good to pass up. And again, this is a guy with top 10 talent. You get him at 23, um, and he, he's super young. Shane Ray, looking at him coming out of Missouri, he's only 21 years old. He's 6'3", 245 pounds. Uh, last season, he was the uh, SEC Defensive Player of the Year, and he had 14 and a half sacks at Missouri, which is a school record. He actually broke Alden Smith and Michael Sam's previous record of 11 and a half sacks. So he has a school record there, and he had 22 tackles for loss last season. He's just a disruptive force um, and is a guy that has a great motor. Elway said it best. This is a guy that plays with his hair on fire. He's a great energy guy to add to your defense. He's got elite first step quickness. Mike Mayock said he thought Shane Ray had the, the best uh, first step uh, quickness in this draft of any edge rusher. And again, this is a top 10 talent. You're getting him at 23. You trade two fifth round picks and Manny Ramirez essentially to trade up to get him, which is nothing. I mean, Manny Ramirez is a solid player in his own right and he'll be a solid uh, you know, offensive lineman there for the, for the Lions. But we, we kind of replaced placed him uh, with, with Max Garcia, the center we, we uh, drafted in the fourth round. I'll get to him in a little bit. So you, you kind of uh, alleviate that loss of Manny Ramirez with that pick. And then again, you, you get rid of two fifth-round picks. That's not very much. Um, and again, this is a guy that has a ton of potential. Yes, there are some off-the-field issues. Uh, obviously, he had a very tough upbringing coming from a, a very uh, tough neighborhood in Kansas City, Missouri. And he just had, uh, you know, a mar got charged with marijuana possession a week before the draft, made a mistake. But I think this is a guy that... It, you know, is coming to a great situation here in Denver with a great locker room, a great organization. Um, and, and look at the guys he's got to learn from. He's got Von Miller, a guy who's made several uh, mistakes off the field and learned from them, and DeMarcus Ware. You know, so he's got some great uh, leaders to, to learn from. We have a great locker room. I think it's a great situation not only for us, but for Shane Ray as well. And I think this is a guy that could be a huge help for us, uh, you know, next season in terms of getting to the quarterback. And you look how he compares with Von Miller. Uh, they're very similar in, in terms of their build. Von Miller, 6'3", 246. Again, Shane Ray is 6'3", 245. Uh, you look at it as pro day. Shane Ray ran a 4'6", 440, which is pretty good at 245 pounds, and put 21 reps on the bench press at 225. Von Miller, when he came out, ran a 4-5-3-40 um, and also put 21 reps on the bench press. So they're eerily similar. Von Miller, obviously, a little more athletic, where I think Shane Reed might be a little more stronger. But I think uh, oh, you know playing under those two guys, Miller and Ware, is only going to help Shane Ray. Um, obviously, we're, we're kind of taking a gamble on him, and, and this is a, a, a kind of uh, big risk. Uh, but big reward type pick for the Broncos, but I, I loved it. I, I think it's great value at number 23, and again, you're getting a guy that plays with a great motor, has elite first step quickness, and, and really is a, a great complimentary, complimentary pass rusher to Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware. You can never have enough edge rushers. So now you got Von Miller, you got D. Ware, you got Shane Ray, and you also got Malik Jackson, who I think is emerging as another very solid edge rusher here in Denver. Had a great year last year, and he's one of those guys that's versatile where he can rush off the edge or interiorly uh, collapse the puck as well. So you got those four guys now. We got a heck of a, a punch. Uh, in terms of our edge rushing, and, and you know, you, you put Shane Ray in, in Wade Phillips' three-four system. You, you you put him with uh, Bill Kohler, our new defensive line coach, and have him learn from him. I, I just think that's a great situation for Shane Ray. And again, he's got a ton of talent. Um, he's got to get better in terms of his technique, in terms of his, his his first step quickness, his ability to get to the quarterback, his natural talent, and his motor. I think this is a great pick, and I can't wait to see what Shane Ray does next season uh, here as a rookie in Denver. I think this is a guy that definitely could have eight to twelve sacks next year and be a, a very pivotal part. Of of our defense and definitely take our, our pass rush to that next level. 
The Broncos' next pick was in the second round, pick number 59. Uh, we drafted Ty Sambrilo, offensive tackle at a CSU, 6'6", 311 pounds. I like this pick a lot. I thought might have reached a little bit for, for Sambrilo, but this is a really good character guy, uh, a guy that has left, ta- uh, left tackle potential, probably going to you know uh, be a potential starting right tackle for us next season. And uh, he fits very well in our zone blocking scene. This is a guy that's very uh, a good athlete, very mobile at 6'6", 311 pounds. Again, has good feet, has that left tackle potential, so you love that. And again, this is a good character guy, good locker room guy, was one of the leaders there at CSU, one of their, their, their team captains. Um, he's a competitor, man. He, he plays with a little uh, nastiness in him. He's, he's got a little feistiness to him, if you will. Um, and, and he's a very solid pass blocker. And again, he kind of fits in the Kubiak's uh, zone uh, uh, blocking scheme. And he's a guy that, that I definitely could see starting at right tackle for, uh, for us next season. Now, he does need to get a little bit stronger. He gets bullied sometimes. But, you know, with that 6'6 frame already at 311 pounds, you would hope he gets stronger coming into our strength and conditioning program, and he needs to become a better run blocker, which is obviously going to be pivotal for him uh, seeing you know action on the field, getting playing time, and fitting into our zone blocking scheme, because obviously we're going to run the ball uh, quite frequently uh, under Kerry Kubiak, but this is a, a very solid pick in the second round. I like his potential. Again, could be a potential left tackle. He's a good athlete, very mobile, um, and, and you like the, the fact that he's a good leader, good locker room guy, good competitor. You want those type of guys in your locker room, and he's going to compete right away again uh, to, to, to be our starting right tackle next season. Broncos' next pick then was Jeff Hireman, tight end at Ohio State in the third round, pick number 92. This guy's six foot five, uh, 254 pounds. I didn't really understand this pick. I don't think uh, you know Jeff Hireman is, is a bad player or anything, but we really don't need tight end. You, you re-signed Virgil Green. You brought in Owen Daniels. You brought in James Casey. I mean, I, I really didn't understand why we took a tight end. I mean, I, I could see us gotten quarterback here, maybe inside linebacker right here, running back. I think there, there could have been other positions the Broncos could have looked to fill. This was one of the more questionable, pick, questionable picks I thought, made by John Elway and Gary Kubiak. But I like Jeff Hireman's potential. You're looking at a guy uh, that's a solid athlete. I think people make too much of him being an underrated athlete. I mean, he did run a 4.840. He does have a 34 and a half uh, inch vertical, so he has solid athleticism. Doesn't ne- necessarily translate, though, to his ability to, to get separation um, You know, uh, in his, when, when he runs routes and, and, and from opposing defenders. But he is a solid athlete. He's got good hands. He's, he'll be a, a solid receiving threat. Um, he's a good pass blocker. Pass blocker, excuse me, um, and some uh, I've seen some people say he was the best blocking tight end in the draft. So you like that versatility. He can play right away. Uh, you know, be an extra tight end in, in some some heavy formations, and, and then help us in the run block as well. Um, he's got great size, 6'5", 254 pounds. Reminds me a little bit of Owen Daniels, ironically, and, and he's again got uh, a great system to come to here in Gary Kubiak, who likes to utilize the tight end. He's got some great guys uh, to learn from and play behind in Virgil Green and Owen Daniels and James Casey. So I like Jeff Hireman's potential. Just not sure. We really need a tight end, but again, it's a guy that is a very good blocker uh, and a solid athlete and, and has good hands, so he definitely can be an uh, effective part of our offense eventually and definitely will be a guy probably used in blocking situations next year in heavy formations and also be a part of our uh, special teams. The Broncos' next pick in the fourth round with uh, pick number 133, we took Max Garcia center out of Florida, six foot four, 309 pounds. I like this pick a lot. This was probably my second favorite pick. Uh, of all the selections the Broncos made behind the pick of Shane Ray in the first round. I like the fit of Max Garcia. I think he's probably going to be our starting center next season. He definitely fills a position of need, uh, fits in with our zone blocking scheme. Not the most athletic guy, but athletic enough to get to the second level. He's not going to wow you with his athleticism. He's, he's not the most mobile guy in the world, but he's a very good run blocker, which fits obviously very well into Gary Kubiak's offensive system. He's feisty. He plays with a sense of nastiness. He'll bring some physicality uh, to our offensive line. He's got very strong hands, good at the point of attack. Uh, and he's a mauler. I don't know if, he, if anybody watched him at the Senior Bowl, but against Danny Shelton, who was the 12th pick overall, overall by the Browns, a very, very strong defensive tackle, Max Garcia held his own and, and even bullied Danny Shelton at times. So this is a very strong guy, again, at 6'4", 309 pounds. And, and he provides a lot of versati- versatility. At the University of Florida, he played left tackle, left guard, and center. Uh, again, not the best athlete, but he loved that he's played three different positions, so that, that gives you some injury assurance among your offensive line. And this is, like Ty Sambrilo, another guy that's a great locker room guy. He's a leader. He was a leader uh, there at Florida. Um, and he's a hard worker. I, I saw something where he's already been studying Peyton Manning's te- tendencies um, and studying our playbook right after we draft him. So you love that. You love bringing in a good character guy like that. And again, he's nasty. He's a good run blocker. Um, and this guy that's going to probably compete for the, the starting center job right away and has that versatility playing three different positions am- among the offensive front there at Florida. You li- like that uh, as well. And, and I think Max Garcia probably one of the best picks of this draft will become one of the best picks of the draft and, and probably be the Broncos starting center uh, next season.
The Broncos' next pick then came in the fifth round, pick number 164. We took Lorenzo Doss, a defensive back out of Tulane, 5'10", 182 pounds. like this pick a lot. This is a guy that's got great ball skills, had 15 career interceptions at Tulane. He's got very good instincts. He's a ball hawk. You, you love that. You love adding a ball hawk in the secondary. Probably a guy that will be our fourth or fifth corner, fifth corner next season. Probably a guy that will be a core special teamers. Um, and a guy that has a, 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 you know, some potential. Again, 15 career interceptions. You like his instincts. He's got those ball skills. He's a ball hawk. He's a playmaker. You love adding playmakers uh, in the back of your defense. Um, he is a little bit too aggressive at times, and he does need to get better against the run, but I think he's a solid pickup, solid value pick in the fifth round. Again, a guy that will contribute right away on special teams, uh, and a guy that's a, a ball hawk in the, in the secondary. Hopefully he develops in two or three years, and then, you know, who knows, can maybe be a third corner, fourth corner, uh, and again, be kind of a, another ball hawk uh, to, to add in that secondary. Last pick I'm going to talk about that the Broncos made came in the sixth round, pick number 203. Uh, we, we drafted Darius Kilgo, defensive tackle out of Maryland, 6'3", 319 pounds. So this is a guy that's, that's going to be perfect for Wade's, uh, Wade Phillips' 3'4". Uh, uh, defensive front. I mean, this guy, he's, he's your traditional zero technique. He's a space heater. He's a run stuffer. We, we needed that guy to add some depth there at the defensive tackle spot. Um, he, he's, he's not a guy that's going to wow you in terms of his pass rushing ability, but I think he can develop a little bit under our new defensive line coach, Bill Collar, who, who did a great job defending, uh, d developing excuse me, defensive tackles uh, during his time in Houston. Um, and this is a big, strong guy as well. Again, 319 pounds, put up 33 reps on the bench press at 225. Uh, and, and is pretty athletic for 390 pounds. We're at a 5'140". Again, he's a space heater, perfect uh, zero technique, a guy that will help us in the, the, the run game defensively, being that run stuffer, eating up space, um, and kind of fill the somewhat of a void that Terrence Knight left behind, give us another big body uh, along the defensive front. We also had three uh, compensa co compensatory picks, excuse me, in the seventh round, uh, but I'm not going to talk about any of those picks I, I'd be surprised if you know one of those three guys make it that we drafted the, in the, the the seventh round but you know th these picks that uh, that I just talked about the the, the the sixth round selection fifth round fourth round third round second round first round selections for the Broncos um, I thought like I said we're all pretty solid Jeff Hireman a little questionable uh, but you had a good center in Max Garcia you had a potential starting right tackle in Tyson Brallo Shane Ray obviously has a ton of upside got good value at him at number 23 Lorenzo Doss uh, ball hawking corner in the fifth round then you get a big space eater and Darius Kilgo in the second round. So the Broncos did fill some positions of need. They had some depth uh, and, and, and physicalness um, across the offensive front. And then again, you get a, a great edge rusher who no one thought would be there uh, before you know the beginning of the last week. And, and Shane Ray at pick number 23 and don't really give up much to get him. So I, I think this was a solid draft by Elway. I'd give it a you know solid B. Uh, B minus, you know, I think this class is pretty good, and, and uh, depending on what Shane Ray becomes and Ty Sambrilo and Max Garcia, if those three guys can, can kind of make an uh, uh, impact immediately, uh, who knows, you know, this, this draft class could even become better. So uh, that's my opinion on the Broncos 2015 draft class. Give me, uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, what do you think of the Broncos picks here? Give me your, your thoughts on Shane Ray, Ty Sambrilo, Jeff Hireman, uh, Max Garcia, Lorenzo Doss, and Darius Kilgo. What do you like about those guys? What do you think they're going to bring uh, to the team next year. How would you think Elway and Kubiak did in their first draft? And who's your favorite pick out of all these selections? So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And as always, go Broncos.